The only thing we have to fear is... I wanted to kick off this 15th episode of Chip Wars talking about something that really caught my interest over the past couple of weeks. Traditionally, computers and GPUs have been used to entertain us or to make things. But lately, there's been a speculative fever growing among certain people using their computers to print money. And that's what this episode is about. But first, let's go into some history. Farmers, construction workers, engineers, policemen, and especially organizations like businesses, corporations, banks, and even countries, practically everyone saved their money. They hoarded currency, causing the price of gold to skyrocket. You see, unless a currency actively flows from investors to businesses, which then hire workers to make and do things for consumers, a modern economy will freeze in a so-called deflating recession or depression. Credit dries up, prices drop, and wages collapse as holding on to money becomes the rational decision, at least for the few people who actually have money to save. Businesses go bankrupt, homes are foreclosed, and people lose their jobs because investors are too afraid. During every recession or depression, the formerly gushing river of money dries up as people lose confidence in the economy. So then it's up to the private and public leaders to do all they can to boost confidence. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is Fear itself, nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. It was in this environment that somebody created Bitcoin, the latest innovation in money, and the first decentralized so-called currency. What I think is fascinating about Bitcoin is how it makes people think about the nature and purpose of money. Is it a safe and healthy currency? Is it even money? It does have the word coin in it after all, but Bitcoin will need more than a clever name in grassroots marketing if it ever has a chance to become a safe and healthy currency. But first, what is money? The common definition is a medium of exchange and store of value in common use. Money is more than just pieces of paper or bits of code. Money is really a leap of faith. It derives most of its value from the collective trust and confidence of the producers, consumers, and governments who use it to exchange value. So in a way, the economic emotions of people are represented by the value of their money. Wow. But sometimes this faith in money can be too strong or too weak. When this happens, money loses its utility as a medium of exchange and the economy starts to slow down. Nobody panics when things go according to plan upset the established order and everything becomes chaos too much faith in money is deflationary discouraging people from investing in other things while too little confidence in money leads to inflation discouraging people from actually saving money a stable currency needs to strike a balance that inspires confidence and healthy economic activity but it helps to use some history to better understand inflation and deflation paper currency was invented to lower the cost and risk of transporting gold the real innovation of paper currency came from the accessibility of currency to people who needed it to do things or buy things governments and banks could now increase the money supply by printing more paper backed by the gold stored in bank vaults. However, this new idea of paper money was taken a little too far at times. Mm -hmm. Scottish philosopher David Hume noticed that there was little stopping governments from turning up the printing presses to pay for debts, mostly to finance wars. And in a healthy economy, increasing the supply of money actually sparks inflation. Everything priced in the inflated currency goes up because people lose faith in the value of the currency. If things get out of control, the economy breaks down and the currency becomes worthless as people demand real assets and ultimately resort to an inefficient bartering system of trade. Well, then everyone loses their minds. In these situations, economies have to start over by creating a new currency and encouraging people to believe in the new medium of exchange. Although inflation is bad, deflation can be worse for people living in modern economies. Everything priced in a deflating currency goes down because people have too much faith in the value of holding money. This actually benefits savers who have a lot of cash already, while limiting producers who want to use the money to build a business, pay off student loans, or even just to buy stuff. What's the urgency to buy when the price of things keeps going down? This is the biggest problem with the experimental Bitcoin market. If Bitcoin gets more popular, it will become more and more deflationary and unstable. This might benefit the savers and miners who stuff their Bitcoins into their proverbial mattresses and later sell them for a profit. But without price stability and elasticity, it can never be trusted to be more than just a speculative investment. In Chip Wars 16, we'll learn all about Bitcoin, 
how it works, and if it's worth the risk. And in Chip Wars 17, we'll try to figure out who is benefiting the most from Bitcoin. Great, this is gonna take you forever and a day, isn't it? Don't worry, I'm releasing all three episodes at the same time. The link should be below the like button. I'm really sorry for the late videos. I've been really busy lately at my regular job trying to finish my mandatory training, so thanks to everyone for sticking with the channel. And here's a shout out to all the latest subscribers. Your feedback helps me out a lot, and I promise to always try my best to earn your viewership. Money don't get everything it's too